Welcome to part two of making this needle felted fire star. In this section we're going to be building up the face. I'm adding a little bit of wool along the bridge of the nose and just above the eye to make sure that the right eye uh, has the same basic shape around it as the one on the left. And so I just saw there was a little bit of an unevenness there and I'm just touching that up. But what I'm going to do is move on to making the muzzle. So I'm going to form two balls out of wool. Just roll these bits of wool really tight. They're, I'm holding it real tight and then I'll start attaching it and I am um, going to do a lot more shaping as time goes on. One of the things that I'm going to work toward on this muzzle is making sure that it's uh, pretty muscular looking. So I'm going to push it to pretty much the maximum limit for width. The outer portions of the muzzle I'm going to aim for kind of lining up with the pupil of the eye. So about halfway through the eye, if you were to look at the cat straight on, should be the edge of his muzzle. If you look at different domestic cats, there's a lot of variation in the length of their muzzle and even in the width, whether it's really wide or really narrow, long, short. So you can really choose how you want the muzzle to look. I was trying to go with more of a wild inspiration, I guess, since this cat ends up surviving in the wild really well. Um, here what I'm doing is getting the right side of the muzzle attached and I have some extra wool that was longer than what I needed as I was rolling it to get the same size as the, the left side of his face. So I'm going to just go ahead and let that stay on and I will curve it around to start building up the chin. So that piece that's hanging down, that's where you'll see that get pulled over and just become the chin a little bit, which again, I'll continue to build up. I don't have a specific um, one way that I do any of these sculptures. I just sort of, each one I work with it as I go. And so there's a lot of freedom. And as you, as you make your own, you could, should be able to do the same thing, whatever kind of works for you. Just, just keep in mind whatever your goal is and keep comparing what you're working on to that goal. So I would definitely recommend having an image that you're basing it off of. If it's the image um, of my completed project, that's fine, or if it's something else. If you have probably a profile view, the side view, and then a front view to just keep comparing as you, as you work. And I think the easiest way to do that is if you actually take photographs of your work from time to time. For some reason, it just really helps to be able to visualize what you've got so far. So I'm building up his nose right now, just adding some more wool to this top portion of his muzzle, which will be the bridge of his nose. And I do keep checking the profile that I'm creating for his face, which is why I keep spinning the wool like this. It's not to show you the back, it's just I'm looking at the profile. And the camera happens to be on the side. So I'm just making sure that I'm getting this built up how I want it to be. I do use this um, needle felting pen that has three needles a lot. I find it, it helps it to felt really quickly. Those needles that I use are the fine gauge. I'm not exactly sure what they are, but um, when I order the replacements, I always select the fine gauge. I feel like they're probably close to the yellow needle that I use, which is a 40T, and they're definitely fragile. Um, I've gone through several. They will 
They will break if, if you're not careful. So part of that is just making sure that you have the needle go in and out of the wool at the same angle. Like don't put it in and then tilt it as you remove it or even vice versa. They snap really easily. So I'm just checking to make sure that everything is how I want it to be and just keep moving along. So for reference, I'm including the pictures of this cat um, near the end of this process. So you can kind of see the shape that I'm going for right now. In case you need to compare, you can come back to these. And I'll also have them again um, a little further ahead in this video just to compare to again. The part of the facial structure that I'm working on right now is the cat's cheekbone. And I like to think of this portion as an upside down triangle. I'm going to go ahead and include some still shot images here of the cat once I pretty much have all of the facial, facial features complete and show you the different angles to look at the cheekbone. Here's the front view of the cat and you can kind of see that there are two triangular shapes formed under the eyes. If you look at it from the side view, you can kind of see again that triangle shape. And then this is the top view so that you get an idea of about how thick that you want to build up the cheekbones sticking out forward beyond the eyes. So I'm still building up that cheekbone and uh, if you go back at any point to the still shots you'll see there is a shadow beneath the cheekbone because it does protrude from the face so I'm just kind of working on making sure there's that definition of the cheekbone here. Where the cheekbone and muzzle meet you want the edge of the muzzle to be kind of in line with the pupil of the eye and where these two parts of the face meet up there's sort of a slope, um, like a diagonal line, not quite from the tear duct, but from the bottom part of that cheekbone triangle in a, along the nose ridge. Um, it's gonna slope down on the muzzle. So it's not like his muzzle is these two perfect round spheres. They're actually squished down on the top, smoothed down, kind of like a teardrop I'm going to go ahead and include some images of the shape that I'm going for on the muzzle so that you can kind of keep that in mind as well as you're building up the muzzle. Here's a look again at the front view of the face. You can see that the muzzle is more of a teardrop shape than a sphere. If you look at it from the top view down, you can see that it has an angle that it comes out from the tear duct. And then when you look at the side view, it's a little more complex because the triangular bone of the cheekbone is pushing sort of into that teardrop shape of the muzzle. Here I'm just working on the definition of the ridge of the nose. So those two parallel lines that are going to come off of just inside of the tear duct area. And I'm also working on um, sloping the muzzle. And then here I'm, I looked at the side view and I saw that the nose itself needed to be flattened in a little more. I'm just working on getting that 
tear shape to the muzzle. Again, I'm just checking out to make sure that I have the cheekbone clearly defined as separate and distinct from the muzzle. Here I'm just building up that teardrop shape. Again, just paying attention that I have this triangular cheekbone and this teardrop shape of the muzzle. I spend a lot of time just trying to make sure that there is good symmetry on this cat. So I'll compare one side of the face to the other and slightly build up um, one side or the other just to make sure that it matches. And the brow of the cat should make a nice continuous slope um, from around the top of the eye down inward to the sides of the nose. So I'm just making sure that that is symmetrical for both eyes, along the eyes meeting along the bridge of the nose and where the muzzle itself meets the bridge of the nose and that triangular cheekbone area. I want it to be very symmetrical and just have the correct shape. I'll go ahead and add a, a still shot of um, just pointing out the way that the eyelids should appear from the front and from the sides once you have the wool all the way built up on both the brow, the cheekbones, and the ridge of the nose. So looking at it from the front, you can see the shape I was talking about earlier, where if you follow the pupil up, it meets the high point of the open eye. And then if you look at it from the side, you should create this sort of an angle between the lower lid, and which is on that cheekbone obviously, and the upper lid. And I'm just making sure that I have that nice slope and angle that comes down. And of course then the little triangle cheekbones. And build up the front of the muzzle a little bit more. Eventually you want to make sure that you get a nice straight crease between the left and the right side of the muzzle, right below the nose. And it's really important that you uh, triple check that your nose and also the separation in the muzzle right there is right in the center of the face. If you use the 36T needle, you can really 
create definition even when the wool is becoming very dense. It's a really strong needle and I think I've only ever broken one once. <laughs> Whereas this yellow one, the 40T, it is fragile, but I feel like I can get a lot of good detail with it as well. I actually like it the best, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why. But I do use this black one whenever I feel like I need to get really strong creases in the wool or really um, clear definition when the wool is starting to become very firm and harder to shape. It's just a stronger needle. Right now I'm going to start working on the definition of the lower part of the muzzle. So I'm going to include this image again, if you can kind of see where the muzzle has sort of a smile curve to it just a little bit. And then it meets up with the triangle of the cheekbone. Actually the muzzle is a little bit too wide right now. It's ending at about the same width as the outer corner of the eye. And where I want the width of the muscle, muzzle to end is at the center of the eye, right? Kind of in line with the pupil. So I'm going to be doing a lot of condensing that wool that's around the muzzle and pushing it inward more so that it gets a little bit narrower. It's just a little, it's a little bit too wide at this point. So you'll see me just kind of working along the muzzle, just that teardrop portion, and pushing it inward more, tightening that wool up so that it will become narrower. On this side, it's still, it's still pretty much the correct width, but on this side, it, it's a little too puffy, and as I tighten up that wool and push it more inward, the muzzle will get a little bit narrower.
So here's what I have so far. Just building up a little more on the chin. It was a little bit too flat. I'm just working on creating the definition of the muzzle now on the right side of the cap so that it'll match on the left side. So again, I want to get that sort of a curve up at the corner of the mouth and that'll again meet up with that little triangle shape of the cheekbone plus you know, I want to make sure that the slope is the same on both sides. I'm just working on the definition of the ridge of the nose.
during this time-lapse portion, I'm really just doing the fine-tuning of getting everything correct, getting all the little angles correct and all the lines correct, which I've shown you in the pictures and you can refer back to. But again, you're just looking for a final shape that has these features. So here's the final facial features that you want to achieve. You want to make sure that you have these triangles where the cheekbones are. On both sides, you can see these triangles. You want to make sure that you have the teardrop shape to the muzzle when you look at it from the front, that it slants down from the ridge of the nose. And then this is from the side view. You want right here to be vertical, this little spot on the, the upper part of the nose. And then from there, from the brow upward, it curves back. And then from this flat part downward, it should slant down. So you can see those angles. The muzzle, again, you want this slight curve up right at the corner of the mouth. And once you've got that, you're ready to move on to building the ears. And yes, I have a whole video just on making these ears. <laughs>